Justin Fields has been named the starter at Ohio State. And we're gonna talk about it after the bumper. What do you mean oh. you don't subscribe to my son's YouTube channel? Mama, no! Just snap the damn ball, RJ! What's up, kid folk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always OU related, college football related, sports related. We have a good time. And today, Justin Fields has been named the starting quarterback at the Ohio State University. This falls in line with what we thought was going to happen when he announced that he was transferring out of Georgia. This is a guy who ranked number two in the 2018 class behind Trevor Lawrence as not just a player, but also as a quarterback. And I was interested to see him end up at Ohio State because we know that the offense that Ryan Day wanted to run fell in line with what he does well and what he was being asked to do at Georgia was not necessarily be a quarterback. It was be a dude that can be a dynamic athlete and a runner, which is great unless you're a quarterback and you want to be developed into the kind of guy that gets drafted, not just in the first round, but with the first pick. Fields has that kind of athleticism and talent. Over 4,000 yards passing, over 2,000 yards rushing coming out of high school as a two-year starter. Mr. Georgia football, committed to Georgia, went to Georgia, didn't like how it was going at Georgia, went to Ohio State. And that started a domino effect at Ohio State of Tate Martell transferring to Miami, of Matthew Baldwin transferring to TCU. And then it just seemed like a matter of time before Justin Fields was named the starting quarterback at an Ohio State team that a lot of people think is going to contend not just for a college football playoff berth, but for a national championship berth. And I think that that was always going to have to be that way it goes for them to get there. Justin Fields is your guy. And if Justin Fields was your guy, Gunnar Hoke would have to be phenomenal, which would be a good problem to have if you're Ryan Day. But I think that the attention paid to Justin Fields forces your hand on this because in the same way that I expect Jalen Hurts to be named the starter at Oklahoma any day now, I expected Justin Fields to be named the starter at Ohio State. That said, I, among others, expected Tate Martell to be announced as the starting quarterback at Miami, and that didn't go well, right? Well, it didn't go well for Tate Martell. It didn't go according to plan to the rest of us. Now we'll get to see what Jared Williams looks like against Florida in the week zero matchup on Saturday evening. But this also is the latest in a string of starting quarterback announcements. Like if we go back through it, Jaron Williams at Miami, Sam Howell was announced on Sunday at North Carolina. This was a studded freshman that was expected to compete. He was committed to Florida State. He got flipped by Mac Brown when he went to North Carolina. And now with Phil Longo calling the offense out there, it's gonna be fun. I don't know that they got the horses to run that air raid offense just yet, but I like what I saw with Phil Longo and what he was able to do at Ole Miss and Jordan Tahamo because I had that dude as my starting quarterback in my college football fantasy league, and he wasn't bad. He was actually pretty good. Then Arizona State, Jaden Daniels is the guy in a year where I expect them to hand the ball off to Eno Benjamin and try to play defense, but Jaden Daniels could develop into an outstanding passer. Now, for where I live locally in Oklahoma, still got two quarterback competitions. One is in air quotes. The other one is real. First one in air quotes, Jalen Hurts. Now, if Jalen Hurts didn't win the job, it would be Tanner Mordecai or Spencer Rattler. Spencer Rattler has been good. Spencer Rattler is very talented, but I don't expect him to do anything other than redshirt this year. We might see him in four games and that be it. Tanner Mordecai actually was looking to push for the job because this is going to be his first of two opportunities to compete for the starting quarterback position at Oklahoma. And this is a guy who came out with quite the pedigree himself. Led Waco midway to a state championship game, 4,000-yard pusher, 1,100-yard rusher as a senior in high school. The dude can spin it, and he can absolutely play, but we all believe in our bones. Jalen Hurts is the guy, all right? And Jalen Hurts is going to remain the guy unless he just does something demonstrably bad on a football field or suffers a horrific injury, both of which I hope don't occur. One, my team. Two, I want to see if he can do what nobody else can do, which is lead two different programs to a national championship, at least national championship game, if not winning it at Alabama, as a quarterback. Nobody's done that, right? That's That would put him at the top of the list for me as the greatest of all time because it had been unprecedented. And a guy of his stature and his caliber doing it on the grandest stage at two of the most storied programs in college football, that would be a story that everybody would be interested in. 
But back to Justin Fields. I think Justin Fields next to J.K. Dobbins is going to be a lot of fun. I think that K.J. Hill is poised to become one of the breakout stars on college football's landscape. I know that Buckeyes fans know about K.J. Hill, and I know that they know a lot about K.J. Hill. But I'll tell you what I think about K.J. Hill. I think he's going to be one of the best wide receivers in the country and get one of the most opportunities of any player to get touches. I think they're going to use him in all kinds of ways. I think he's going to be what Paris Campbell was for them last year. And he's got the goods, right? I drafted that dude on my college football fantasy team, for which is a money league. That's how much I believe in him and how much I want Justin Fields to distribute the football to his direction. But it's also not just Ryan Day. It's also you got Kevin Wilson out there coaching tight ends, but you got to be crazy to think that you're not going to involve Kevin Wilson in your game planning, along with Mike Yursich, who was at Oklahoma State and had diagrammed the offense at Stillwater for the past few years, put a guy like Mason Rudolph into the league. And then at Oklahoma State, of course, you still got sports Spencer Sanders and Drew Brown, for which I think Spencer Sanders is the guy, but Gundy is probably going to go into not just the game against Oregon State, but probably the game against Tulsa, having played two quarterbacks, trying to give both those guys opportunities to win the job and probably won an opportunity to lose the job because he likes both of them. He thinks that both are plenty good at commanding the offense. And I think a lot of that's just going to be handing the ball off to Chuba Hubbard in the first place. But this is a big deal for Ohio State fans because they have a quarterback that is thrusted himself into the Heisman conversation just by being named the guy. You got to love Justin Fields' attitude about this because even going back to Big Ten media days, he was saying, look, nobody gets given a starting position. You go out and earn it. And that's what everybody wants to hear. That's what every fan wants to hear. That's what players want to hear. That's what coaches want to hear. I hope Justin Fields ends up being that dude at Ohio State because you combine his ability to run and pass and you're looking at the same amount of touchdowns Dwayne Haskins had, probably just spitting them up around 35 and 25 or 35 and 15, excuse me, because he had 50. 35 and 15 as opposed to 50 touchdown passes. All right, that's it for me. Doses.